In this video, I wanna show you how to add a little bit of modularity inside of our actor-based blueprints by adding different audio sounds to each of our audio triggers. So we know that we're triggering our actors correctly, but we wanna actually play the sound. So what we could do, we could add an audio component to my blueprint audio trigger right here. So we want each one individually to have access to its audio, it's gonna need an audio component. I'm gonna add a component, audio, and we'll just leave that named at the default. Compile, save. And now we're gonna go over to our viewport and we can reposition this if we want, if we want this to be up higher, or um, I, would, I would put it around the middle because this is gonna be modular, so we want it to come from in here. And this is one downside to modularity is we need to decide what is common between all of the trigger volumes. So if we wanted this to be a little bit more specific, like we wanted this trigger volume to play the sound from over here and this one from over there, then we may wanna do that in the level blueprint or offer more control to be able to manip manipulate this. But for now, I'm just gonna put it in the center. Compile, save. And what I need to do is I need to tell this to actually play. So if we pull off a true, we could say play or play sound or something, but this is too many options. But I mentioned earlier that if it is a component or part of the blueprint, we have easy access to it. So we already know we have our audio component. So just like our box collision, I'm just gonna drag my audio over here. And off of this, I'm gonna say whatever sound effect you have configured, I want you to play. So true, connect that. If it is the player, play the sound, then compile and save. So now, save it. We need to actually configure our audio component. Now we could do this here, right? We could do the settings over here. But we don't really need to because when we place this inside the level, I'm gonna close this out. We place an instance of our blueprint audio trigger in the level. We can actually declare an audio on this specific instance of this blueprint, right? This one we may want one audio, the other we want, may want a different one. So for example, on this one, I'm going to click that, go down to the audio component, choose the sound, collapse one. So other one, I may choose the sound, audio collapse two. And this, there's gonna be a problem here. I'm gonna show you what it is in a second. Save it, hit play. You see how we heard those sounds right at the beginning? The problem is audio, very similar to particles, comes auto activated. So if we click this audio component and we scroll down, we may want some to auto activate and others not to. In this case, it's a trigger, so we don't really want that. And you know, maybe we could customize that in our blueprint if you wanna get fancy. I'm just gonna turn all this off by unchecking auto activate. So now, play. You see, we can add some customization. Each one can be different, and I don't think this one was a, uh, let's do um, something more noticeable. Yeah, there we go. Play. Right, I'm not actually shooting my weapon there. Um, but we can have different audio triggers that still have their own functionality, but we're adding different sounds. And that's the power of components. Um, you can actually expose other things as well, but for now, I think it's useful to know that you could add other things, like you could add a particle effect, and then if you add it as a component, you can go and you can customize that per instance of the blueprint. But either way, it's just playing the audio that is attached and then we can customize that. So pretty cool, we've created, created a little modular audio trigger that we can um, save and use in any levels we want.